Good day all, you're watching my Google Enterprise. Today's topic is going to be on a uh, star data starter. So we get to understand exactly how a star data starter functions. So we will be focusing on the control circuit. So like we all know, or like we know, a star data starter is made up of two different circuits, which we have the power circuit and the control circuit. So looking at the star data starter, we have uh, several components that should be put together so that we have or achieve the star data starter. And it's being used to run an electric motor. So a star data starter comprises of three different contactors as well as a timer. So these uh, three different contactors will be for, we'll use one for the main contactor and then the next we'll use for the star contactor as well as um, the delta contactor. So all these three different contactors are going to put together so that we will be able to achieve the star data starter. It's very important. And then like I said, we have as well the thermal, the timer. And then also we have the thermal relay as well as we have uh, different push buttons such as um, the start push button as well as the stop push button that we have. So as we keep driving, while you are carrying out your star data starter, or perhaps you have a project which you are carrying out, will be built based on the specification of that project. But in this case, we'll be discussing um, the basics as of how the star data starter functions, so we get to understand or have a general overview of how the star data starter functions. This is a control diagram of a star data starter. So we are going to be discussing on how this functions. So we'll be focusing on the control circuit, like I said, and then also while you understand how the control circuit function, it will also pave a way for you to understand how current is flowing from the, the top or from the upstream going right up to the level of the electric motor, and then you find your electric motor rotating or running. So the, the first point here, which is um, the fuse, or in this case, we can as well use a circuit breaker in this point. So in the place of a fuse, you can replace with a circuit breaker. So any circuit protective device you can use in this location. So the next we have a thermal relay, which we are going to be connecting to a cl the close contact of the thermal relay, which also is an overload protection or overload protection relay. The next point is going to be a stop push button. So um, we are going to be using the close push button for the stop push button like we all know when you press the push button where your hand is released from that push button the contact or that uh, the, the the part which you pressed which uh, extends is going to retract back when your hand is released from that push button and then as well as it will open that contact when you press as when your hand is released from it it retracts back again and then closes the contact or goes back to its normal state the next is going to be our start push button, which of course is going to be an open contact. So when you press the same way, it extends while it closes the contact. When your hand is released from the push button, it retracts back and it goes back to its normal position, which is normal open. On the side, we have um, our K1, which is a contactor K1, which in this case is a main contactor. In this case, it's a main contactor. So when you you press the push button, it will as well activate the coil, which will close this contact and keep enabling current moving from upstream going to downstream. On the side here, we have our K3, which is the contact which is associated to the contactor K3, as you can see. So this coil, once it's energized, it closes or opens the contact of the contactor Delta or the, for the delta contactor. The same way we have a timer, a timer which is T1. The timer T1 now is um, a close contact which is associated to this timer. And then down we have the coil of the K2, which is the star contactor. On the side as well, we have K2, which is a contact which is associated to this K2 contactor. Then we have an open contact which is uh, from the timer from the timer. 
And then down we have the coil of K3. On this side now we have the coil of the timer. So we start from the beginning. But what happens is when, you're, when we press the start push button, which is the open contact, as we press, current moves from upstream going to downstream and energizes this coil K1, which is the main contactor. So at this, key, at this point now we have the main contactor coil is energized. So all the contacts which are associated to this K1, they are going to change their states. So we, we start from the point which is at the upstream. We see a K1, this contact is going to close. As it closes, a hand will be released from this start push button. So when it's released, it retracts back again by the help of the spring, which is inside the, the push button. So it retracts back, it goes back to its normal open position. So preventing current from flowing from this point coming to the level of the coil. So what keeps this coil now energized is by the help of this hold on contact, which is K1. So since it's closed, it, it has closed due to this coil energized. So it, re, it keeps the coil remain energized due to this contact. Like we said, it's a, a hold on contact. So the same way now we have current now moving from this path, goes down to the level of this coil K1. The same way we'll have current moving in this direction as well. It gets to this point, it gets to this point and then moves to the timer. So this timer coil will energize the same way it gets to this point and it's not able to move down because this contact is an open contact. So it gets here, it's a close contact, which is K3. It moves down, gets to this contact as well, which is a close contact of the timer T1. So it still moves down and then gets to the level of the coil, which is K2, which is a star contactor. In this point now, we have this coil of the star contactor energized and then enabling the motor now to operate in star. So since we have the, the current also as well, we shall go to the level of the timer. And in this case, we have our timer, which is um, an undelayed timer. So after a predetermined time, all the contacts which are associated to this uh, timer, they, are, they will all change their states. So we have all this level where we find T1, T1. So in this case, we have the close contact, which is connected to the star contactor. And then we have an open contact of the timer T1, which is connected to the delta contactor. So like we said, after a predetermined time, this contact, this uh, the contact of the, of the timer, they are going to change their states. So the first part, which is T1, which is connected to the star contactor is going to open. When it opens, this contact as well as T1, which is connected to the delta contactor is going to close. And now it will prevent now current flowing to get to this contactor coil, which is star contactor, it will de-energize. And at the same time, we'll have this contact as well. The coil, which is connected to the delta contactor is going to energize. So now see what happens. Like we said, the law of a contactor coil, when the contactor coil is energized or when sufficient voltage supplied to the contactor coil, what happens is all the contacts which are associated to that contactor, they will all change their states. So we, we had already before that K2 was energized initially, which is a star contactor. So all the contacts change their state, which is K2. This K2 is going to open, preventing current flowing to energize K3, which is a delta contactor. At the same time, after a predetermined time, like we said, the timer contacts which are associated to that timer, they are going to change their states. So this normal open here is going to, the normal close, sorry, which is uh, attached or connected to the star contactor K2, is going to open, preventing current to flow to the coil, which will de-energize the coil K2. When this coil is de-energized, it now changes its states of all the contacts which are associated to that contactor coil. So we have K2, which is here, was open due to this coil energized. Now it will close back or go back to its initial state, which will remain closed. At the same time, we had this contact now, which is closed due to the coil of the timer energized. So now current moves and gets to the delta contactor. So this K3 is going to energize, which will now enable current now flow to the, the motor and the motor will start running in delta. So the 
star contactor now will de-energize or the coil of the star contactor will de-energize. Now we have the motor running in delta. At the same time, when you move now to the level of the stop push button, as you press, it prevents current flowing down. So all the contactor coil are going to de-energize. So we start with K1, which is the main contactor, is going to de-energize. We move as well with the delta contactor, which was energized previously. So it's going to be de-energized. At the same way, we have the timer, the coil as well is going to de-energize because we have the push button that has been pressed. Basically, this is how the direct the star data starter functions. So while we understand how this works or how the control system of a data star data starter function will be able to carry out maintenance on site and then also do our troubleshooting so that we get our motor functioning correctly or the right way that it's supposed to function, which is very important. Until then, you're watching Macogan Enterprises.